Okay. All right. This so arc is really, really starting to get exciting. What awaits us in this end? And Uda did not lie for once. Well, he technically has never lied, but I feel he sometimes do not keep many promises, but that's maybe because we expect too much. But he did not lie that this arc is about Sanji, because now, whatever past Sanji has had, it is way more extreme than any of us have ever thought before. The theory that he's still a family of a royal family may not be so far behind. I so desperately wished that fear was not true. As again, because there wasn't a single hint of this. But for once, that this actually makes sense. Not that it could be a royal blood, but because he hasn't told anyone of his past, because he doesn't want to talk about his past. It's Alasabo, something that he left it behind when he left North Blue. In the One Piece chapter, 8113, on the first note on the cover page we see Labon being very happy. He must have heard news about the Strats. I ho hope it uh, broke also. As they all, uh, as in the continued talk of uh, Capone of all this, Sanji suddenly asked how did they find out about all this stuff. And also, Sanji has no choice but to uh, go after go f following them. At first he of course wants to refuse because he knows what his loyalty lies. The funny thing is Brook seems to be familiar with the name but he's from West Blue. They are from North Blue. This once again hints that it could be a criminal family. Come on! If not a royal family, at least a criminal family. Maybe both. For them to, for him to react. And even and even Capone Beige seems to know what what they are. But the here's a, but here's the most weirdest thing about them all. Brooks says that in order to cross to the East Blue, you have to cross the red line, meaning that Sanji had already seen it, or at least somehow crossed it, because the North, East, and West and South are just that, and the red line is just in the middle or whatever. So, he had to cross it. How in the hell did he, at just at the age of nine, cross it? That This is what is getting exciting. Of course, Sanji refused this, because he knows where his loyalty lies. And that is to his captain and his friends. But Kapoombesh reveals that um, he had a triumph card for this situation. AGAIN! Oh, I so wish for the time he'd get his ass kicked which I hope will happen. Apparently, it's not that when he enters his body, it is not as dormant as we think. In fact, he can still move it. And moreover, once you are in his body, he turns into a freaking bookie bookie no me user. Yeah, no kidding. His devil fruit is not just a power where he can store people and weapons. No, he can turn weapons inside his body. Or are you telling me that he can store weapons in his body and turn his entire fortress body into his um, weapons <sniffs> doesn't make sense but one thing does make sense that when Sanji dropped his cigarette it began to burn and Capone Besh was very desperate in putting it out revealing that although the fortress fortress fruit the shiro shiro fruit uh, allows him to become a living fortress one I have a bit great guess that maybe the fabric of the fortress is not stone, but the same type of fabric that is his clothes. Maybe that's why he panicked. Although, other than that, I would say it's pretty weird that a cigarette will burn a fortress, you know. So yeah, he threatens them that they are hostages and uh, in every step of the way, and everybody is gonna go with them, including the stars that they have captured. And so the advisor of uh, Kapombesh, that creepy lizard, mouth or whatever. His name is uh, uh, Vito, Monster Gun Vito, an advisor, reveals a secret to Sanji, which he reacts with fear or shock with. Okay, what kind of secret is it now? Please, I'm begging you, do not let it be something disgusting. I'm begging you, not something disgusting. But um, 
So yeah, and he also reveals apparently that once again, Big Mom is someone with enormous shrewd priorities. We all know she loves sweet but hates bitter sweets. Apparently, she also has a schedule. Everybody needs to attend her tea parties. And since Jinbei is an ally of Big Mom, doesn't that mean he and his crew has to join it too? Once again, in a hint that Jinbei may help Sanji once he gets there. Uh, so when tea party happens, everybody has to attend. Every single buddy who's an ally. And apparently, somehow this secret was discovered by, well... Because Big Mom is Big Mom. It's clear that Capone Besh do not care about whatever he does. He just decides to be someone's underling, and he wants to hide behind a strong shadow. A uh, clear and cape sign of a coward, of a manipulated schemer that deserves nothing more than defeat. And so Sanji has no the other choice that, that to agree. And he does he writes a letter, gives it to Nami, and says that I'm sorry that I never wanted to drag you into this, and I never expected my past to happen. But I have to do this. This is me. And so, with the last shock, he actually managed to throw the three straw hats, but not Caesar, of course, out of Kapum's body. And finally, he turns the tail on that manipulative bastard. Grant that he doesn't go berserk and kicks everyone's asses. No, he once again shows that Sanji is a mastermind when it comes to scheming. He managed to grab a goon's gun, pins down Caesar, and says that they will not shoot. Don't shoot because they need Caesar because Big Mom is asking for Caesar. But also because since they are asking for Sanji. They can't shoot him either. They need him alive. Because whoever paid off the government to to want him only alive, it's his family, no doubt, then he is willing to go willingly and but not to go after the but they but only if they leave the straw hats alone. Not to mention that he threw them out because he sensed Nekomamushi, who's somehow not in a coma. If he's not in a coma, how come Inu Arashi could? Are you telling me Neko Mamashi is stronger? Or his wounds weren't as severe? Mm, no idea. But it um, uh, seems like um, our dear uh, Kapumbesh uh, swallowed more than he can chew. Because he asks what is Pekum's doing there. And of course he... Uh, Kapumbesh does a lie that... Uh, he is a friend of Pekum's. But as Nami and the others yelling for what Sanji to come back and wait for Luffy, Sanji just gives them a smile, almost like a farewell smile, and says, I promise I'll be back. With no other choice, somehow Kapun Besh transforms his um, legs into tank rolls and rolls away. Again, how in the hell can he do that? His power is not the Buki Buki no Mi. How in the hell can he tra transform his body into weapons? Again, can he store weapons and then transform his body into that? Give me a clue here, people. Alas, he escapes and Brook just reads the letter. With tears in his eyes, he probably thinks Sir Sanji won't be back because, well... He says, there, I gotta meet that go, gotta see this chick real soon. I'll be back, I promise. The reason why he doesn't think Sanji's gonna come back is because, well, we all know Sanji loves ladies. And when the lady is there, he thinks he won't come back. Brook. Sanji loves ladies, no doubt. But do you really think his loyalty to our lady is stronger to his loyalty than to his crew? Every single lady has helped this time, has moved them. Whatever, this is basically this chapter. I know it was a long review, but it was certainly awesome. Mm, I'm already longing for the next. Which I know, after the next chapter, there's going to be a break. I know, or if something like that. On a side note, Sanji's past, yeah, it's most peculiar. He was only a hand wave that he was born in North Blue, but he never told about it. And now it is clear. It is basically confirmed. He left it. He did not forget it. 
He did not get amnesia. No, he left it. Just like Sabo. But is the Vinsmoke family a crime family or a royal family? That's what I need to answer. Given to our fact everybody gets shocked, I almost more suspected a criminal family than a royal family. But on a, another thing we can note, Trafalgar Law is also from the North Blue. I hope the crew members will ask about ask him what the wind smoke is, so he can confirm it for us. But now Sanji is almost about to be married because how many days are it left? Just one? Wonder and uh, this was another thing confirmed. It is somehow that ugly, grotesque, and utterly dangerous big mum is some other. Yeah, because Caesar himself confirmed one of big mum's daughters. That that basically confirmed that Pudding or Pudding or whatever her name is, is really the 35th daughter of the Linlin family. Which is big mum's family name. So somehow Big Mom has 35 daughters? Or again, are you confirming me that Big Mom is, is the main leader? I'm not not matriarch, it's something else. <sighs> Screw it. Again, but I said, truly, this was awesome. But if it is next, I just hope we will get more to the point. Big Mom, is Big Mom gonna be the villain of this arc? I have a feeling, very big feeling, that Luthi is going to react now in extreme anger. No one takes away his cook. Because we know that when Nami left this similar message in Strong World, Luthi could barely hold his anger. So give me your thoughts if you have any.